Hello team, Sam Wild here in my garage. I'm here to have a bit of a ramble about our bluefin tuna. Um, we are so lucky here in New Zealand to have a fishery that just seems to be getting better and better every year. And if things continue the way that they are, um, these amazing world-class fish are gonna be super accessible to the average sparrow here in New Zealand. Um, what I wanna talk about is the setup that I'm gonna be using when I'm chasing them this winter. I'm gonna be targeting them off the west coast of the South Island here. Um, and hoping to uh, find something similar to this guy here, um, if, uh, if not something a little bit bigger. Um, so to start with, I wanna talk about the gun that I'm gonna be using. If you're gonna be targeting these fish, it's really important that you take gear that is suitable to the fish that you're chasing. These bluefin tuna are incredible. Uh, they are the absolutely world-class, beautiful eating, and an amazing fish to see in the water. And the last thing you want to do is A, lose your gear because you're not prepared, and B, even worse, is wounding, losing, and killing a fish without taking it home. Um, so your average day kingy gun, um, it's not quite gonna cut it. The reason why I say that is because I was really surprised by how thick the skin was on these fish. All around the fish is almost like the gill plate of a kingy and plus you, the, the depth of a, of, of a big tuna you really need something that's going to give you some really good penetration and get into the good stuff so you can get a really good holding shot for me i'm going to be using a 120 double roller um, this one has a mani sub with a seven and a half mil or an eight mil shaft um, you don't want you probably don't want to shaft any thinner than seven and a half mil um, and it has a slip tip now rollers definitely aren't everybody's cup of tea I can understand that. There's a little bit more sort of fiddling around with them, which can be a pain in the ass. What I like about them is you get that much more bang for your buck. You get a lot of power out of a smaller gun. And I have had moments in the water while, while we were filming with South Sea Sparrows where we had a good school of tuna around us and you did find yourself trying to track fish. Another good thing about the rollers is very little recoil. But yeah, my personal preference. But last year I used a double flopper. Um, instead of a slip tip, I uh, had a super grunty gun, 120 double roller, um, but even then didn't get full penetration through that really thick stuff. Luckily stoned it, um, I don't think I would have had any problem in that hard stuff, but if it was, it was, a, if it was a body shot, I'm not sure I would have had the result that I had. I only had one of the floppers come out on the other side. With the slip tip here, what I like about slip tips is that you, you still get incredible penetration. This thing here is razor sharp, but then a slip tip comes off and you have this full area of purchase. Hopefully you can get in and get that slip tip and around some nice good holding stuff but you just get that much more purchase when that slip tip turns inside the fish yeah so for me personally um, i will probably be using this as the primary i just like the idea of a slip tip a little bit more than a double flopper personal preference for me um, but i'll be using the double flopper as a backup so that's the gun i'm going to be having it set up where as a breakaway gets the gun out of the picture less stuff along the line to go wrong. If you're shooting big fish like this, you want to get yourself set up as a, as a breakaway. Super easy to set up. You can ask Auntie Google if you're building a gun or if you have a gun that you want dedicated for tuna. Um, this is the, the, the setup that I would recommend. Slip tip with a breakaway. Next, I want to talk about floats and float lines. There's a couple different ways of, of doing it. For me, potentially what I'm thinking about starting with is this beast. I think it's a 25 meter or a 20 meter rife bungee what i love about these bungees is that it puts the fish under pressure without putting too much strain on your gear what i mean by that is is that this bungee is going to be stretching out this fish is going to be fighting itself um, through the stretch of the bungee and basically as that bungee is stretching it's eliminating the amount of stress that what you would have on your gear and for me what it means is that i can use a slightly larger float as my initial float, what I'm going to be using is this Mahi Haku here, 40 litre. Um, if I was to be using a static line, I'd probably want a smaller float, just because as that fish runs, if it's hitting a big float with a lot of volume straight away, it's putting a lot of extra strain on all of your potential fault points along your gun, as well as putting extra strain on the fish. And if you're holding, if your shot isn't the best, more room for something to go wrong. So the way to eliminate that, is you could use a smaller float. If I was to be running a static line, something that doesn't stretch, I'd be running a, uh, a coder here. Um, and basically what that means is this float here will go underwater and it'll do the job of a bungee and this float will be creating resistance on the fish. The fish will be gassing itself out by fighting the flotation of this float um, and yet less, less strain on the gear. 
but I'd, st I'd still want to run a bungee at some point, but you can potentially run a shorter one. Um, I'd probably run a shorter, maybe 10 meter, 15 meter bungee um, from the smaller float here to a bigger one. And then these bigger floats can go to work and actually stop the fish from disappearing too far. The downside of using a bungee as your fighting line is that as you are fighting the fish, you're sort of incurring the same problem. As you're trying to pull this fish in close, you'll actually be stretching the bungee. You're gonna end up knackering yourself out. But there is one way around that, and that is by using a setup like this. I will have this clipped off off my last float, and what I have here is just a small 30 litre float with a line and a shark clip. And basically, as I'm fighting that fish and pulling that line in, I'm going to be clipping off intermittently along the way. And I did, it's pretty much like saving your progress. If the fish does some runs and this thing here goes underwater with it, that's fine. It's going to be a lot easier when I'm pulling in the last of that line with this float, helping it come back to where it was. If you don't have something like this set up, I wouldn't be rocking one of these bungees. Otherwise, you're going to have a really hard time. So my setup is going to start with bungee, potentially, to a haku. Then I'm going to have a static line from a haku to a marco. So this is a 50 litre float. I'm going to be pumping up all my floats to between 15 and 20 psi, so they will be rock solid. Um, and then off this marco, I might have another coda hanging off the back, um, just as a, just to sort of create that last point of contact as as just a real solid anchor point. And then I will have that other coda hanging off the back of this as well, and that will be my fighting float where I clip off on the way back in. What I do when I'm setting up my line is once I sort of understand what gun and everything I'm going to be using, I will go through from the tip of my spear to my last float and I will try and eliminate every contact point where there could be a fault. And what I mean by that is everywhere where there might be something crimped or there might be a shark clip that's not quite up to scratch or a D shackle. If you can take as many of those little elements out of the game you're just eliminating areas where something could go wrong. For me, say where there's a shark clip or where there's a crimp, I'm gonna be ideally tying a knot. Um, if you have like a, a rope for your static line, that uh, makes life a lot easier, um, but you really wanna make sure that if you do have shark clips, they're up to scratch, um, or you can get around that by, if you can, tying some knots. A good solid bowline isn't gonna go anywhere. If you can keep it nice and tidy, you still have a pretty good setup. I'm gonna be chasing fish off the west coast. Uh, there's fish all up the west coast and all down the east coast of New Zealand at the moment. Some amazing fish being caught from Kokoda, Wellington, Napier, Waihau Bay, but not many being shot up that way. Uh, I think the way that these fish are feeding and the depths that they're hanging out makes things a little bit tougher for sparrows, but if you, can, if you do find fish on the, on the sounder, you can always try and park up on top and just get some chum in the water and try and bring them up. Or if you, can, if you see fish on the surface, see which direction they're going, get the boat out in front of them, get yourself in the water and jump in with some chum. The hard thing is, is when they're feeding and when they're moving, it's hard to get these fish to stop. If you can get them to stop, it could be into one. I'm gonna be chasing them off the west coast and we're gonna be chasing them with chum or potentially off the hokey trawlers. Um, I learned last year that it's good to, if you are jumping off these trawlers, no, I, which I don't recommend, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking some hokey in with me um, and sort of just chumming that as soon as I see the net because I did see a couple fish hanging off an empty net and they didn't hang around. But if there was something in the water to make them stop, I could have been in. Um, but ideally we want to get some swimming up and feeding and presenting a nice shot. But yeah, something to think about. That's my setup. Uh, if you have any questions, flick us some comments or you can flick us a message. Um, otherwise, best of luck. Stay safe out there. They're big fish. Know where your line is at all times, especially before you shoot. Make sure you're all very clear of your line and uh, make the effort to look after these fish. If you're chasing bluefin tuna, make sure you have each device, figure out where you need to stick them to bleed them because what you're going to end up with is a fish of a lifetime and something that is truly world class on the table. You probably want to eat the whole thing raw because man, it's just sashimi. But frothing for you, best of luck. If you have any questions, sing out. But, uh, yeah, there you go.